Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at the new release of Deepin, which just dropped here yesterday. And uh, this is one that a lot of people have asked me to look at in beta. I can never find the beta links and I just really stopped caring because Deepin's never been one of my favorite distros anyway. It has some controversies, um, you know, based in China. A lot of people from China say, avoid it at all costs, it's from China. And it is open source, though, and a lot of people have looked at it. They've had some controversies with EULAs. We'll have a look at what the EULAs look like. They've also had some controversy in there was a like a, a data analytics in their store in one version. After a little bit of controversy, they have taken that out. It does appear, though, that Deepin is listening to at least some criticisms and feedbacks. They've made a few changes in here that are like, hmm, okay. And then they made some are like, Bleh! And so we're going to go ahead and have a look at this new Deepin 20. And uh, let's go ahead and start by having a look at their release website. So over here on their blog, this is again from uh, September 11th. So uh, this is Deepin 20 in this uh, drop down. So they have changed a, a number of their things and some of their theming and, and UIs and things. We'll have a look at what it looks like. So we have the unified style DDE. So basically some changes in how the structure works. They are one of the ones that have finally realized like Budgie that putting all of your settings in the sidebar is actually not really user friendly. And so they have pulled that out. And most of the other things look fairly similar, although there's some, some stylistic changes and, and things like that. So it supports light and dark themes. Uh, they have uh, the notification center can be personalized. We'll have a look at what the settings look like. And they do have a dual kernel system running. So it's du dual kernels. You have the options. Uh, you have safe graphic modes, bringing in more options for system installations and improving overall stability. So we have the LTS and we have the 5.7 stable in there. The system installer, um, it's basically it's an OEM installer. You drop it in there and it does its thing. What I did not find on the App Store is I did not actually find a way to change uh, the repositories. There used to be a way you could say, hey, grab from China or grab from not China. And that option seems to now be missing. So there's the, the apps you're used to seeing intermingled with a bunch of things with the Chinese names that um, I can't quite understand or read. So I'll leave it to you guys to let me know what those guys are. Uh, they do have fingerprint recognition. If you have a fingerprint on your device and are interested in using such a thing as that, they have uh, that there. And then you can kind of see they have a lot of uh, different uh, bug fixes, improvements, the docs, and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and have a look at the, uh, the EULA and the basic installation information, and then we'll actually look at an installed version and see what it looks like. All right, so here we can install Deepin with the 5.4 kernel, or we can install it with the 5.7 kernel. So you can choose which kernel is going to be best for your particular build. I used 5.4 for my uh, install build. See, it goes right on into a very nice uh, Deepin startup screen. It's one of the things I've always liked about Deepin. They have gotten the look of the system perfect. Where many other Linux distros will focus on hey, making sure the thing works, which is awesome, but the startup screens, the shutdown screens, you're not seeing all the things that a new person might look at and go, what's my computer screen doing? All right. So here, of course, it defaults to China. You can go up and select English. And then we have an end user license agreement. We have a privacy policy and we have the Deepin user program license agreement. I think this one might actually be optional. I don't know for sure. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can see if you're toggling the buttons around, you do have to read and agree to the end user agreement. The Deepin OS user experience license program, this is a different setting. If you turn this on, it's going to turn on really, uh, it looked to be fairly advanced diagnostics and um, diagnostics and, uh, and data collection. So I would not recommend doing that if you're using it, but let's go ahead and have a look at what these look like. Um, of course, I'll read it just like this because it makes perfect sense to me. All right. So over here, uh, the user experience program called the program is a network service developed and operated by Union Tech Software Technology. So they are utilizing a third party affiliated data collection company. Um, affiliated companies, especially in Wuhan, Deepin Technologies, 
the to facilitate the improvement of user experiences with the service the hardware application software and operating system information of the u- of the computers running deep in can be collected and analyzed to determine future improvements please read all limitations now i was trying to read through this to see if there's anything in here about what exactly it's collecting if it's collecting any personal information or not it basically says it's not so which means that it's probably more intrusive way more intrusive than ubuntu in the system resources less intrusive than windows 10 in that it is going to uh it's not going to be collecting user data the best i can tell but still this is a type of things that i do not like you can toggle this on or off in the system once it is set up so if you have installed it and turned it on i'd recommend going and turning it off all right so <clears throat> again, this type of system information, it's not the end of the world, and but it is certainly can be problematic for some some people. So but the fact that it's an it's a opt-in option and it is something that you can toggle on or off, uh, that is a little bit better. Still, I would way prefer Ubuntu style. <laughs> <laughs> definitely prefer what that's doing. All right. Um, they're just doing a single time and, um, <clears throat> you know, you can say no. And this, of course, you can say no to it as well. Um, let's see. Deepin OS software, which is maintained and issued by Deepin based on Linux kernel. Okay. Software is integrated open source software licensed. Uh, software is open source operating systems, complies with system software license agreements, et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's a whole huge EULA. So let's see if there's a scan through there, see if there's anything exciting there to, to call out. Basically, um, so we're seeing the Union Tech stuff in here again. So we're not necessarily agreeing to the opt-in there, but we are actually seeing a lot of things about Union Tech and copyrights and things like that. You can only redistribute the software when you have retained the copyright mark and copyright notice of the software in accordance. So you, you, you can put a new link to it. You just can't really modify it. So that raises the question, I mean, it's open source, but is it free? Who knows? All right. Disclaimer, warranties, limited liabilities, third-party programs. Deep in community may distribute third-party software programs within it, which are not necessarily to run the software provided as a convenience to you. These are subject to their own license terms in addition to any program you install and run based on the software is considered third party. So they do actually have a deep in cloud account you can use. So that's really what the EULA is. And of course they do have a privacy policy. All right. So let's see, you can contact us through there. Let's see, privacy policy sets forth personal information processed by union. Let's see what it says how we collect, how we use cookies, how we share, how we protect, how we store your rights, how we process miners' data, how we transfer your personal data globally. That's exciting. Uh, our personal information protection specialist and your right to appeal. All right. Let's just see the how we collect. When you use the software services, your relevant personal information will be recorded and stored automatically in your local devices, including network identified information, your IP, your uh, device information, including your device motherboard. So uh, let's see, operating system, operating system version, last data, okay. Uh, daily login times and the sources for each download. For example, the version, is, the version installation location and start and exist time of your applications. Uh, personally in di- identifiable information you authorize only when you actively enable corresponding business feature can uh, can information of this kind be transmitted through the server. So that is um, that is if you enable user experience, we're authorized to read, record, and store the information in your local devices. We will stop recording the information when it is disabled. So apparently they are, they're not, it's murky what they're grabbing. It's very murky to me what they're grabbing. Are they actually grabbing personal information or not? I'm getting conflicting messages here. This is the type of reason why I generally do not recommend Deepin. They do have the options to turn those off. Now, there's two applications. One of those is those user program. Uh, one of those is the Deepin Cloud. Let's go ahead and agree to that and get as far as we can. 
Okay, so at this point, we're not going to go any further because it does require 64 gigabytes of disk space or 128 for is more recommended. You can encrypt it on the installation. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, switch over to a, an already installed version. So we'll be right back on that. Okay, so here we are. We get booted right in over here. We can go with advanced options. And looks like there's probably nothing there inside the advanced options that's that's really different. So here, let's uh, see. You can logs right on in with the with the deep in loading screen. I can probably push the up button to get to the text, but that's not the default. So you will get this nice loading screen as the system loads. All right, we land here on the login screen, so we can just go ahead and enter our super secret password. That's definitely not one two three. Very nice looking login screen. Like I said Deepin's always done the theming just correct. They've always been top-notch on the theming, even when some of the other things have been a little crazy. It looks beautiful. So maybe that's a metaphor for modern society. It looks beautiful, but it's frightening under the hood. So here we land on the desktop. Now when you first boot it up, you do have a welcome screen, which we can reload now. And if I just go in, go in here and load up the welcome screen, then you'll see the options that you have. We have some introduction video. You can choose between the fashion mode, which is more, a little bit more Mackey like, um, in that it just gives us a bar over here. You can change your menu, of course, to a more Mac like menu there. If uh, that's your preference, you have that. Or you can choose the efficient mode. This is the mode that I like personally. Uh, you can choose the effects mode or the normal mode. In other words, is it beautiful and bling or does it just kind of work a little bit better? Virtual machine normal mode usually works a little bit better, but I want to show you what the efficient mode looks like. And we can choose the icon set as well. So you can go with Bloom Dark, Bloom Classic Dark, Bloom Classic, or Bloom. So those are the options that they give us on the welcome screen uh, or Papyrus, I guess. Scroll on down there. All right, so there we have landed here. Again, the settings panel has changed. It used to stick out to the side. It looks kind of novel, looks kind of neat, but in reality, it's really hard to work with. And so pulling the settings out to its own separate panel was definitely a, a good decision. Here we have uh, brightness. If you're on a, you know, a laptop or something, we can change colors or night shift over there. You can do display scaling. We don't have a lot of options there. Um, but uh, that's what we have. Refresh rates. You can touch screen. So if you happen to install this on a touch screen, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, default applications. You will notice here that they have changed uh, Google Chrome for Firefox ESR. Uh, this is, I didn't mention earlier, this is back to being based on Debian 10 again. Uh, they keep on changing their package base. Uh, mail is Thunderbird text. We have text editor. We have Libre Writer as an option. We have a built-in music application, built-in video application. We have three things here for, for images, for defaults, and we have a single terminal built-in. Here is your theming. This is what it would have been cool if it was a little bit, you know, if, if we actually had these options inside the welcome screen, but we don't, but they're over here. You can go light mode. You can go auto mode. Uh, or you can go dark mode, and then we have our accent colors. So go ahead and add this to your uh, to your individual um, list of distros that allows you to choose the different color theming options. I'm not really married to any of these colors, though. Um, like, I wish they, we had more basic, like a basic red, a basic orange, but it's like all the colors are just slightly off. Um, or slightly bright or hard to look at. So we don't have a lot of the softer colors. Um, we have the window effects. Uh, that's, of course, the efficient mode or, or not efficient mode. And then here we can do transparency all, right, all the way off or all the way on. So we have a lot of, of those options there. And window minimize effect. Can't really see the difference on all those. That might be because we're on virtual machine. Here's your networking items over here variety of different network items I'm trying to see if I can add a we add a VPN here easily or not not seeing that we'll have to look into how we can add a VPN I'm sure we probably can here's your notifications we have do not disturb you can set a time on that we can indicate what giving uh, what is giving us notification this is the thing that I was really wanting in the past 
because remember my biggest concern running deep and in the past for my tests is the notification was decoupled from the application notification. So every time I'd get an email, it ring the notification bell twice. The only fix to that was turn off notifications altogether. So now we can actually manage all notifications separately. This is a radically positive change. All right, here is our volume controls, date and time, power settings, mouse, and keyboard. All right, so as far as other options that we have, the default applications, like I said, we have Firefox ESR. Let's see if we can go, what else do we got here? Okay, that's our file manager here. So that's looking, looking good. Here's your categories. So under internet, we have Firefox, Thunderbird, music. We just have the music application. So it's not an overly bloated system. Uh, we have just a couple tools that are useful for what we need. Of course, our settings, these have a variety of things that we all have inside of the settings panel, of course. And we have some user feedback. Let me get into the settings panel again. There's one more thing we forgot to go into. Uh, and that was where the... Um, Okay, so here's your accounts, here's your Deepin ID. So this is the settings panel is looking for. So down here at the bottom, we have general settings. This is where you can opt in or opt out of the user experience. So if you have toggled that checkbox, this is turned on. To turn it back on, you're going to have to re-agree to that EULA again, the one that we did not agree to the first time. So that is the option you have there. Here's your system information. You can see that uh, it is checking for updates. Everything is there, and you can set update settings. You can turn it on, turn on or turn off checking for updates, clearing package cache notifications, and download updates. So there are a lot of nice, good features within Deepin overall. It is actually looking to be coming along quite nicely. It'll be good to see what happens when the security researchers like QuidSub will get in here and, and do a lot more of the things that I don't know how to do as far as really doing the auditing for security. I know he's the one that identified the, the App Store um, bug in the past. Let's have a quick look at the App Store. They've always generally had a pretty good App Store, although I like the option to choose your region and locality because right now I'm not seeing that option. So as we log in here and it loads applications up, you're seeing that um, there's definitely a lot of the applications we're used to. And then we have things that I have no earthly idea what it is because they're all in Chinese. You can install things like Google Chrome. That is still an option if you want it. But it was good that they took it out of the distro by default. It said there used to be the option there to go in and uh, toggle your region uh, regions, but I don't see that option anymore. And here is the uh, button up here for the, the Deepin Cloud, which we've not created an account with. But you can actually use Cloud Sync, and that's going to basically keep a backup of some of your user information. So there is Deepin, and since they are good at showing you uh, basically turning on and turning off the system, giving you very nice and beautiful uh, design aesthetics, let's go ahead and shut the system down and see what it looks like on shutdown. So here we are here, and let's go ahead and shut down. Oh, it actually did give us a little bit of the Linuxy stuff. All right, so there is the fast look at Deepin 20. Definitely a few changes in there for the positive, a few changes in there that are a little bit more concerning. But overall, hey, it's a it's another very nice, slick distribution based on Debian. So I would just advise a little bit of caution because of the EULA. It's not exactly clear what type of information it is being collected. But at the same time, Hey, it's a, it's a distribution you can look at in the deep and desktop environment is fairly compelling for some people. So have a look at that and uh, let me know what you think about deep and yourself in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities.
Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.